Everybody, it's uh, Chris over at Dixieland Farm, and I figured I'd do a video on how I digitize my vinyl. I am picking an album that is of terrible condition, just so we can see how good we can get with this thing. So, I'm picking this also, pandering to Baraka P. Dub. We got Art Blakey and his Jazz Messengers, Cubop with Sabu and a Bongo. Nice. This is. If I'm being polite, a VG minus, 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 minus. We can't even, can we even see how? Yeah, there we go. This is a G record at best. It does not skip. It has received the scrubbing bubbles treatment. It's as clean as it's ever going to be. But it is crackly. It's like listening to... Jazz around a fire. So, why'd you buy this? I bought it probably because it was a buck or two. Because I took a chance on perhaps it sounding okay. And probably because I never saw, I, I never see that record. And for like a dollar or two, you know, I, I, it, it's worth a try. And it was worth a try. I actually was able to listen to the record. I probably wouldn't listen to it very much because of how noisy it is. So, that's where digitizing comes into play. So, let's go ahead and see how I digitize. All right, so here's my uh, TIAC recorder. I have it actually set for 24-bit, 44.1 uh, kilohertz. I could record it at 48. I could actually record it at 96. Even though it says 48, it's a hacked firmware, and it does record at 96. But um, I have found that really 24 bits is what's really important, not the 44.1. And the chance of creating errors as I digitize down are slightly greater than just capturing it at the resolution I'm going to ultimately use, which is 44.1. Uh, do record it in stereo. The noise reduction software works better when it's in stereo, even if it's a mono recording. So I'm just going to go ahead and start the recording and drop the needle. Okay, everybody, uh, sorry for the shaky cam, but uh, here we go. We're going to load up the sound sample. So uh, I've imported the file, and if you go to noise, here's actually the noise that's coming out of the recording. If we listen to the input, and again, here's just the noise that's being removed by click repair. If I listen to the output, if you turn it off so it's not in real time, on a quad core processor, this takes just a few minutes per side to clean up the audio. And also, because it was a mono recording, I clicked the mono, and that actually helps remove even more noise because it'll look at the difference between the two sides and get a better determination of what's actually noise and what's actually music. The next thing I just did was I uh, normalized the audio. So what that does is it finds where the highest peak is uh, on the file and then raises the entire file up to the proper level. So on 16-bit... There's, you know, the headroom is pretty important to get everything recorded just right. But on 24-bit, there's a little more playroom, which is why I record at 24-bit. So that way I don't overload the input. I record kind of at a slightly lower level, and then I increase the volume via software. So all it does is just raise the volume of everything in proportion. It doesn't change the dynamic range at all. Now the next thing I do is I load a program called Wave Breaker. So what this allows me to do is listen to the waveform and break up the wave file into chunks. So there's my first break and right here is probably where the second break is. And then I find the end of the recording. Right about here. And 
what that'll do is that'll actually break up the WAV files. And I'll delete the first file and the last file. So that's where I drop the needle and then where I pick the needle up off the record. And there are only two songs on this side. So, the steps. Again, <laughs> so I record the album to my mini uh, recorder. I take the SD card. I run it through my click repair program. Then I normalize the audio, so I bring the audio up to its proper level on each side, not each cut, because each cut may have a dynamic range, but the album sides, even when they cut the album sides, some sides are louder than the other. So you bring it up to the correct volume, but without changing the dynamic range. The dynamic range stays the same. You're just breaking it so it's the proper level. Then I break up the file using my wave splitting program. Uh, some people use Audacity, some people have other programs. Wave Breaker is a Linux program and I love it, but um, you know, for your computer operating system that is probably something else. And then I take the files and then I'll uh, burn them to a CD so I have a hard copy already ready to go and then I'll take that uh, also and convert it to an MP3 and either put it on my music server or my MP3 player or both and I always have the CD backup to re-rip if I ever needed to. That's the process. It doesn't take particularly too long. There are a couple of steps to it. Um, because I'm a Linux geek, you know, I've got a lot of these steps um, automated, like the normalize program. What that does is it'll actually normalize all the files in the folder. I just type normalize wave and it just does it. And then click repair just starts right up. Uh, so a lot of this stuff I've kind of automated into a process, but that's what us geeks do. So um, I'm sure you're curious. So I've done a sample of side one of this album. Uh, I've done it as 320K MP3, so I've got side one noise and side one cleaned up. Take a listen. Link's below. Take care, everybody.